Hey everyone, this is Joe with Southeastern Frontiers, and today I am hiking the old railroad bed trail in the Montesano Nature Preserve on the slopes of Montesano, Alabama. <laughs> The Old Railroad Bed Trail is an easy two-mile loop trail in the Land Trust of North Alabama's Montesano Nature Preserve. The trail starts out at the Land Trust Bankhead Trailhead parking lot and smoothly descends along the path of the old dummy line railroad tracks that used to provide transportation to the top of Montesano. Along the way, you cross over numerous footbridges that mark the location of trestles and railroad bridges. Further along this lovely walk in the woods, you go around a sharp hairpin turn and cross the site of the Mega Trestle, the largest of numerous trestles along this route. After reaching Fagan Creek, the route I took departs the old railroad bed and follows the Alms House Trail back up to the trailhead. Along the way, watch out for some lovely fossil exposures in the rocks. This is a lovely, easy trail that I highly recommend if you just need to get out and take a walk in the woods. The old railroad bed trail has a ton of history to it, and the Land Trust North Alabama has partnered with the app Travel Stories to provide you an audio tour of this trail, which is I highly recommend. You can uh, download the app and it will automatically tell you the story of the rail old railroad bed as you're going. The trail starts off today by following the Bluff Line Trail. But it won't be long and we'll be joining up with the old railroad bed trail. All right, we have come to the intersection of the old railroad bed trail with the bluff line trail. So today we are going to go downhill a little bit to the old railroad bed trail. Off we go. From the late 1880s to the early 1890s, a steam train provided transport of people and cargo from downtown Huntsville up to the top of Montesano, where there was a, uh, a ho large hotel built um, on the uh, Mountain of Health, as Montesano translates. So today I'm exploring the, uh, the trail that uh, follows the old railroad. This is the site of a trestle that used to cross the, uh, the wash here for the old railroad tracks. As we cross the footbridge here, you can clearly see the cut rocks that used to be part of the uh, foundation for the uh, trestle that was built on top of it. So the track came down from up there and crossed the creek here and continued over on that built up area on the other side. Very cool. Here we've come to our second crossing footbridge and uh, you can see more evidence of the, uh, the old railroad track that was here. Some more foundations for a trestle across here. And we're coming up on a cut through the, uh, the slope up here. Here you can clearly see the, uh, the cut where the uh, tracks used to go. Here we come across our third footbridge, and this one's a little different. Uh, the others were trestle crossings. This one's a bridge crossing, it's not, not near as wide. You can see, and you can see where it was, uh, the rocks were built up, on, and the water came tumbling down from up here. Very cool. Here we are at another nice footbridge, and a uh, another uh, Nice bit of stonework here from the original train bridge. Very cool. A lot of work to move those blocks around. Those are pretty big blocks. This portion of old railroad bed is pretty straight. I think there's a really tight switchback coming up up here. Here you can see where the tracks used to cross this creek here. There's some embankments built up over there. There must have been a trestle across here. 
and uh, the track went right through here and probably through this cut that's uh, in front of me here although the uh, the trail goes up on the berm So the original path of the track was through this cut here. You see all these stones piled up in here? And this one really big one? Well, this uh, landslide that filled the, uh, the original train cut apparently occurred as recently as 1948. Um, the roots of a tree caused the rock to split off the, the uh, side over there and it slid down into the, uh, the old train cut. So that's why the trail is up on the berm instead of down in the train cut. Fascinating. There's a little side trail over there that takes you to the very top of the mega trestle. So that's that little point, little hill there. And then there's a, uh, a drop down into the creek valley, a little footbridge or a big footbridge crossing at the bottom. So this was the site of the largest trestle across the on this uh, track that reached across to the other side over there. I'm sure we'll see it again from a different angle. Continuing downhill. Here you can very clearly see the mound of built up rocks where the uh, trestle used to end on the high side. And then uh, across on the other side over here is the, uh, the other end of the trestle where the rocks are piled up. And today there's a uh, footbridge across the creek here. A couple of them actually. Well, one really nice long one. Cool, huh? Past the side of the old mega trestle. We are back on the uh, bed of the tracks and continuing on. We have now come to the intersection of the old railroad bed trail with the Alms House Trail and that takes you down to Fagan Springs. But I think today we are going to stick with the old railroad bed and go across the, uh, the route of the old trestle here across Fagan Creek. The trail continues off on the other side, but since the creek is dry today, I'm going to explore a little bit downstream here. I bet this is dang impressive when there's water running through here. All right, this is where we depart the old railroad bed trail and head up the Alms House Trail. The first real uphill of the trail going up the Alms House Trail. This will take us all the way back up to the trailhead and parking lot. But we gotta quickly gain back all the altitude we gradually lost, taking the longer railroad bed route. I'm under the power lines that you cross on the way up uh, Alms House Trail to, uh, to the parking area. And I noticed in this rock right here, some really nice fossils. You can see uh, lots of bits of, uh, of uh, crinids and maybe bryozoans. Um, and uh, oh yeah, here's a really nice crinid up here, right there. A little one laying on its side there, the stem. Lots of them in this rock. I noticed this rock here that I set on top of it has a very nice horn coral in the top of it. You see that right there? That is a horn coral. Neat. There's some more fossils around the side of this rock. Very cool. Several of the rocks here have them, especially the, uh, the cryonids. Very common fossil around here. You can see their bits and pieces in all this rock.
There's a very nice blastoid right there. See that? <laughs> that was another animal that lived on top of a stalk and filter feeded, filter fed from the uh, water. Very nice. Besides fossils like the one you see in the rock there, you can find living animals here too. If you look over the rock, there he goes. <laughs> a little lizard. Trying to hide out for me there. There are so many fossils in this rock, you can kind of understand how limestone is itself always a fossil. <laughs> limestone is entirely made up of the dead bodies of mostly microscopic organisms, but in this case, not so microscopic. Wow, some very nice crinid fossils. See the little cylinders sticking out of the rock there? And the little rings? They're all body segments of the stems of the crinid animals. Very cool. Reminder that uh, when you find fossils like this in a public place like this, leave them so that other people can enjoy them too. All right. We are almost back to the parking area. <laughs> the Land Trust parking lot is right up there. Thanks for coming along with me today. This has been a wonderful hike, exploring the old railroad bed trail, along with a bit of the Alms House Trail. And uh, you have a great day. Mm -hmm.